Blog Talk Radio. Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Russ Lateau, and welcome to my show on blogtalkradio.com. The series that we're continuing with is called What Color Am I Today? So our call-in numbers are, if you wish to give me a call, uh, uh, 347-327-9944. And um, if you have any questions or comments or anything you would like me to address or, or a question that you may have, then I would just... Um, I would love to receive your call. You can also, if you have a headset on your computer, on your listening screen, there's a little button towards the top that says click to talk. So you can also click on that as well if you wish to join me. I also have the chat room up and running. Now just remember that I'm sort of running both, uh, doing the talk show and running the chat room at the same time. So uh, I'd love for you to join me. And um, as I said, pose your questions and comments in the chat room. Uh, just try and be patient with me because I'm sort of doing two things at once, which can be a challenge for me at times. So it's been a very, it's been a really rewarding weekend for myself because as some of you may know or, or if you have visited our website, one of our prime functions is we teach uh, Reiki certification training. So we just finished the weekend doing uh, a level one and a level two with a fantastic group of people. So if any of you happen to be listening, Hey there, thanks for a, um, a really interesting and fulfilling weekend. We really enjoyed spending the time with you and, and sharing what we have experienced with you and, and um, watching the transformation that takes place. It's really neat kind of experiencing it from, from our perspective and, and watching you as, as in really a, a relatively short time period because our students, they arrive on Friday evening and, and we have a short session Friday evening and then it's a Saturday session and a Sunday session. And it's really interesting and, and um, it's really just fun to watch the changes that take place in uh, these amazing people. We've been so very fortunate in that we've had just the best of the best that uh, has been drawn to us. And uh, we're very thankful for that. And as I said, just want to say thanks for coming. It was a great time. Okay, so the energy center or the chakra that we are going to talk about tonight is called the sacral chakra or the second chakra, if you will. And so that one is physically located in our lower lumbar area. Okay, so if you kind of went to the, I suppose, the top of your hip bones and kind of just went straight across to the center, so it would be just a little bit below your uh, your tummy button there, and then sort of go into the midpoint inside your body. That that would be where we would we would physically locate the sacral chakra. Just one sort of comment about chakras, just in, in general, is that when I say we physically locate them there, it's not so much like they're a well-defined you know ball of energy that stays in that spot. So. When we talk about the energetic aspects of our body, of which obviously the chakras are, it's not like they're defined to that. So they radiate out in all directions. And the reason, in my opinion, that we kind of put these placeholders on them is so that it gives us something that, you know, that we can work with and we can understand and we can interact with. One of the things that we talked about this weekend uh, in the Reiki training is something called called symbols, and they're just really tools that, that we can use. And, and as I mentioned to the folks, there's really nothing magical about the symbols so much. They are just something that we can use that, we're, that fits sort of within our physical parameters that causes an energetic effect to happen. So our second chakra, the sacral chakra, the color of orange, and as I said, the physical location is in our lower lumbar area. Okay. Now, when I talked about our chakra overview, which is a few shows back, and you can always go to our archives and take a peek at that, I explained how the frequency of our lower chakras tend to be a lower frequency. Not that that's good or bad. It's just a lower frequency. And then as we go up and up and up the chakras, the frequency gets higher. Okay, so our sacral chakra is quite a low frequency. And as I use the analogy of our, our root chakra or our first one, as like, a, a, the, like the subwoofers in your stereo system, right? And so the energy is very, very strong 
okay? And it goes out in all directions. So we know how those bass tones and those bass sounds flow in all different directions, right? And, and you know, we could even be, you know, the music could be outside, we could be inside, and we even feel it within the building. However, it's also not that directional, okay, because it does kind of go in all different directions and therefore doesn't have as much awareness, if you will, or as focused as, let's say, some of our higher chakras, which are a higher frequency. They are more focused and also easier to disrupt. So, for instance, our high tones, right, the higher frequencies, they you know, obviously aren't going to go as far as the lower frequency, but they are more directional. Now, there's a lot of power in our sacral chakra. The physical aspect of our sacral chakra is if you sort of draw a parallel band around your body, that kind of gives you a rough benchmark of the physical aspects of it. So our sacral chakra covers our hips, our pelvis, sex organs, um, and our lower back. So that's kind of the, the physical attributes of it. The psychological and or emotional attributes of it are physical safety, okay, so food, shelter, clothing, that type of thing. And also, that's where our sexual energy is stored, okay, as it sort of takes us, our sex organs in that band anyway. You know, it's really neat when we can see validations of what we talk about in these type of arenas in the real world. And I've kind of kind of a neat example for this one, and it's a, maybe a, maybe a little bit provocative, although we all know about this. Okay, so talking about the energy in our sacral chakra, how it's powerful, not a whole lot of awareness, not a whole lot of focus, if you will. Okay, then we talk about the physical aspect of it, one of its being the sex organs, right? So all you have to do is remember back, I suppose, especially if you're a male, um, or talk to any young adolescent male, and they will know very well about the power that resides in our sacral chakra, and at the same time, how sometimes the awareness or the logic part of our brain doesn't play a big factor in it sometimes, especially when that chakra is very energized, or shall we say stimulated, okay? So the other thing about this, and this is kind of a neat thing to, to keep in mind, and I talked with our students about that this weekend, that the order of priority for our chakras are the number one priority is our root chakra, our root chakra being connection to the earth, right? That survival mechanism, okay? And then the kind of the order of priorities then just goes up and up and up and up the chakras. So sacral chakra, obviously, sort of number two um, in, in the priority, okay? So let's say you've got somebody that is is very afraid, right? So let's say that, here's an example, let's say somebody had their house broken into and, you know, it wasn't, I mean, it was obviously a trauma. It wasn't the end of the world that, you know, they stole maybe a few things. Um, but now, you know, that person has quite a fear around, you know, their safety and their security because obviously we would feel violated because, you know, somebody broke into our house, took our control away for that moment, right? And so they're very fearful about that. And let's say maybe they're even um, afraid to go back into the house or to stay overnight. So... In that moment, all that energy, or predominantly that energy, is going to be focused in the sacral chakra. So you can sit there and you could talk to them, you know, logically speaking, till you're blue in the face, and they aren't going to hear you because using logic, which is, and that awareness, which is obviously centered in some of the higher chakras, it's like we're talking at one frequency about logic, right? Okay, so, you know, what are the, the chances of him coming back or them coming back or kind of slim to none, all that kind of stuff. And the person could even understand that logically, but because there's been a trauma that has affected that sacral chakra, it's like when you talk, they're hearing wah, 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 because in that moment, their awareness or their focus is on that sacral chakra. And so sometimes what you can do if, you, if you're talking with the person is by identifying sort of what chakra they're kind of operating out of the most in that moment, it gives you an idea of how to speak with that person, 
Okay, so if that's where they're at and, and you know, the, the police have come and they've left and, and now here's this person gets to go back into their house and sleep for the night after it's been broken into. So if you, if you think about how, okay, so right now logic isn't going to work with a person. But maybe what you could do is you could sort of use some conversations that would help to identify with where they're at. So you could maybe talk to their feelings, talk to them about their feelings, you know, and, and help them or maybe even validate what they're feeling, right, wrong, or otherwise, right? And you could say, well, you know, at least I can understand how, how you know, may, you may not feel too comfortable about this. And, and even just speaking to them kind of at their level, right, and using words. So they're operating out of their sacral chakra, they just had some trauma to that area. So rather than talking about them as logic, talk about how they may be, you could understand how they may be afraid and you could understand how, you know, you may be uncomfortable in staying there. And what that will do is because you're resonating with them, because you're talking to them at that level, if you will, they're going to hear you. And you know, it's amazing the power in speaking with somebody or with somebody speaking with you that's let's say at your same level if I can use that word because then you feel like somebody understands where you're coming from or you feel validated and sometimes that is more important than coming up with a solution you know so many times we're focused on solutions I know I am you know, and you know, I'm, I'm a, a pretty resourceful individual. So, you know, when somebody comes to me and they're talking about maybe an issue or something like that, first thing that comes to my mind is, okay, maybe I can have some solutions for them or some thoughts or ideas for them. But sometimes there's more value in just picking and finding that level that they're at and speaking to them and with them at that level. Because then what happens is you two, your two energies start to resonate and then from there and this is some of the things we talk about even in our, in our master's class very from there you can start to work with them and then maybe kind of slowly bring them up bring their awareness up into their solar plexus chakra which is what we'll talk about next week and then maybe even up to their heart chakra and so what happens is once we get that that resonance happening then their energy will start to flow up and up and up and up into the other ones, comes back up to their awareness, okay, up into their, let's say, their brown chakra, and then all of a sudden, you know, they'll go, you know, yeah, now that I think about it, you know, I've, you know, I've changed the locks or whatever and all this kind of stuff, and I'm okay with it. You know, you say, great, that's excellent. Now, that might have been where you wanted them to get to in the first place, but if you try to talk about them using logic, when they're operating out of that sacral chakra, right, which is very strong, very powerful, not near as much awareness, if you will, okay, then you may not ever get them there. But if you can sort of find out where they're at, speak to them at that level, in that moment, then they start to hear you, they start to understand, and then even just being with them and talking with them, will start to help that awareness go back, 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 or that energy flow back, 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 back up to the chakras so things are starting to be balanced, things are starting to flow, and then their body is able to release, right? They're able to sort of see the whole picture, their awareness comes back, if you will, and then they're able to choose what they wish to do, okay? So, oh, I must say we have a minute left. I'm really thinking I'm going to have to expand the show um, I was going to say I'm more of a talker than I realized, but um, I think my students would probably readily agree with that. So our sacral chakra, the physical relationships, is our lower, our lower lumbar area in our back, our hips, the sex organs. Um, energetic psychological is food, shelter, and clothing. Um, so I've got 30 seconds left. Oh, one thing I, for, I forgot to mention is we've been creating an online academy. We call it the Online Academy of Science and Philosophy. And so I have neglected to send out the link to some uh, visualization exercises. I talked about it in the root chakra. I had some folks email me. I haven't sent them out. My apologies. I will get to that in the next couple of days. And also, if you wish to have one on the sacral chakra, feel free to email me by going to healingcenter.ca. Um, so healingcenter, center spelled C-E-N-T-E-R, 
www.ca.gov.ca. That's CA. I'm out of time. Thank you.